members do the series of episodes that are focused on the 2023 GCE Science Paper 1. So over the next series of episodes, we are going to look at this paper to the detail. So each episode will provide the detailed solution to each and every question. So remember, my objective is not to just give you answers, but to give you detailed explanation on why each and every option is not correct and why one particular one is correct. So if you are new to this channel, consider hitting the subscribe button so that every time I upload the video, you get the notification. And if you find this video to be helpful, consider liking. By liking, you help my video to improve their visibility on YouTube. And also feel free to comment indicating on how you find these videos and the ways in which I can improve the content that I deliver so that I deliver what is helpful to you and even your friends that may be in grade 11 or grade 10 so that they should be able to benefit from these contents. So let us look at question A1 from section A which carries 20 marks and we are expected to answer all these questions. The following diagram shows a venial caliper with its jaws closed. So the jaws are closed. Point number one. What is the zero error of this venia caliper? If you look at this one, so this one is the jaw is closed. Then from here to here we have one centimeter. So what that tells me is each subunit there is in one divided by ten, which gives me zero point one centimeter. That's what each subunit measures. So now instead of starting at zero, we are starting two subunit before the zero. So already we have the reading error of 2, so it will be 2 multiplied by the 0 0.1 centimeter, which gives me 0 0.2 centimeter. So 0, 0.0, I add one decimal place, centimeter. But now this is from the main scale. So this is the main scale. So now we need to go and read the venous scale. So the venous scale, the leading is where the leading from the main scale closes with the leading from the venous scale. So you see closing at this point which is in one, which is the third, one, two, three. So this one, the venous scale is two, two decimal places. So it should be like in this, 0 0.03. So we need to add this two to get the leading before we even put anything inside the, the jaw because the jaws are closed. So now we are going to have 0 0.20 centimeter from the main scale plus 0 0.03 centimeter from the venous scale. When you add this, we are going to end up with 0 0.23 centimeter as in the zero error reading. So every time that we now take the leading when we open this we need to subtract this leading which is there before we do anything so that's the zero error reading so that's d is correct so this is how you answer this question number two four objects e f g and h of different masses were placed at places with different gravitational field strength which object has the largest weight this one is just a matter of knowing how to find weight. So weight is equal to mass in kg times gravity. So mass is in kg then times gravity. So at this point we just need to start multiplying this and look for the one that will give us the biggest number. Remember we have the calculator. So in this case for the first one it will be weight because we are looking for the largest weight it will be in this one the first one to be 10.4 which is gravity, then we multiply by 8. So 8, which is 0 0.0, which is mass in kg multiplied by 10.4, we end up with 83.2 newtons. Then beam, the same, it will be 8.5 multiplied by 9.8 is equal to, so this one, it will be 83. 3 newtons. Then next, we multiply these two. So it will be 9.0 multiplied by 10.2. This gives me 
91.8 newtons then the next one you see weight is equal to 9.5 multiply by 9.5 this gives me 90.25 newtons so you notice that this is the biggest which is in C so C is the correct answer question A3 a coconut drops from the top of a palm tree 20 meters high if air resistance is neglected how long would it take the coconut to reach the ground take gravity to be 10 newtons per kg so number one we are told that this coconut drops from the palm tree which is 20 meters high then we are neglecting air resistance then we are saying the question is how long would it take for the coconut to reach the ground so the question is asking us to find the, the time given the height and the gravitational force so to answer this question we use the equation of motion so the equation of motion states that the time is given by the square root of 2 times the height then divide by gravity that's the equation of motion so take note of this equation of motion so take into account of that we know h is 20 meters which should be in meters then this is gravity newton per kg so substituting this one what we are going to get is 2 times 20 divide by 10 which is newton per kg then find the square root of that so what you notice this is will be the square root of 20 times 2 you see a 40 divided by 10 this is equal to the square root of 4 so the square root of 4 is equal to 2 seconds so 2.0 seconds that's the answer so which is in a 2 seconds once you do that you are good to go Question A form, the following diagram shows a uniform interlow in equilibrium when different masses are hung on either side. Calculate the value of mass x. So we're looking for the value of mass x. And what is key is we know that the uniform meter law is in equilibrium. So if the uniform meter law is in equilibrium, what it means is the sum of all the moments on the left side are equal to the sum of all moments on the right side so moment principle of moments is given by weight multiplied by distance or force multiplied by distance or this is given by mass in kg or they multiply by gravity in newtons per kg then multiply by distance in meter now in this case we are being required to calculate the mass now because we are being required to calculate the mass gravity is being multiplied to all the moments so the fact of 10 remains the same so even if I ignore the fact of 10 it will not have any impact on my answer because I'm going to find the answer in mass so what do I do now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum the moments to the right then sum all the moments to the left sum all of them then equate these two so we are saying moment from left must equal to moments from right that's what it means so let us start with the moment then we're going to just say because this gravity is multiplying everything instead of wasting time I'm going to just go ignore this gravity because this is supposed to be in meters but it's in centimeters so instead of me start converting them to meters meters I'll take a lot of time the principle is we are multiplying if you're multiplying this will have no impact on your answer so instead I'll say the first side of the moment will be the distance from the pivot the perpendicular pivot which is this one to where the weight or the mass is in and this one so it will be now to be 30 plus 10 which is 14 which is distance n times the mass so it will be 10 
grams then I multiply it so 10 grams I multiply it by the distance which will be 40 centimeter this I was supposed to multiply it by 10 but because 10 is in Newton per kg and these are in grams and I'm going to multiply everything by 10 so it has no impact on the answer because everything will be multiplied by a factor of 10 so when I divide I divide by 10 so 10 has no impact then plus the second moment which is now from here to the pivot so it will be 20 grams multiplied by 10 centimeter then this must is equal to the moments to the right which is now x grams which is this weight here multiplied by 40 centimeter because this is how far it is from the pivot which is in here then at this point it's just simplifying so i'm going to have 400 grams centimeter which is in then plus 200 grams centimeter then equals x multiplied by 40 which is 40x grams centimeter then I sum this two I'm going to have 600 I'm going to have 600 grams centimeter equals to 40x grams centimeter that's what I'm going to end up with what you notice is when we divide this side to find x by 40 by 40 we divide both sides so this one this one so I mean with x so 4 this one and this one cancel 4 into 60 so this gives us 15.0 grams because 4 into 60 is 15 so you notice that c is the correct answer in this case Question F5, a bullet passes through a wooden block 0.8 meter thick. The velocity of a bullet reduces from 700 meters per second to 300 meters per second as it passes through the block. If the mass of the bullet is 10 grams, calculate the work done by the bullet in kilojoules. So, we have the thickness of the wooden block we have the initial velocity then we have the final velocity as it passes through the the wooden block then we have the mass of the bullet so how do you find the work done so work done is equal to change in kinetic energy that's the work done so how do you find change in kinetic energy so to find change in the kinetic energy which is work done we need to find the initial because the velocity is reducing so it will be the initial kinetic energy so kinetic energy i minus the final kinetic energy which is in f like that once we do that then we have answered this question so kinetic energy is given by f multiplied by mass in kilograms multiplied by velocity in meters per second which is correctly given but the mass is in in grams so we need to convert this grams to kg so it will be 10 grams we divide by 1000 because the 1000 uh, grams in 1 kg so we need to end up with 0 0.01 kg once we have that we are almost good to go then at this point we need to find now the initial kinetic energy so I'll use a different color so in this case it will be half multiplied by the mass the mass remains the same it's in 0 0.01 kg then multiply by the velocity initial velocity which is 700 meters per second we square that then we're going to end up with 2450 joules so this is what we are going to end up so you can use your calculator you will notice that this will be the correct answer then kinetic energy final will be now half multiplied by 0 0.01 then now we are getting this 
Remember for the first one we will use this one because this is the, the initial velocity. Then for the second one we are getting in the 300 meters per second. Then you can simplify that. Once we simplify this with a calculator, you are going to end up with 450 joules. Then to find now work done, work done which are required in kilojoules. So the first thing is we need to find the difference based on this formula. So this difference will be now 2450 joules minus 450 joules. We're going to end up with 2000 joules. But we need to convert this to kilojoules. So there are 1000 joules in 1 kilojoules. So it will be 2000 you divide by 1000. We're going to end up with, let me use a different color, we're going to end up with 2. 0 0.0 kilo joules as in our answer. So this is the correct answer which is 2 kilo joules. So if you go and look at the option, you notice that B is the correct answer. So this is how you answer the first five questions. So please join me in the next episode as we look at question A6 going forward.